I'm not talking to Daddy today, I'm talking to Australia. Can you put a screen up there? <laughs> Well, good afternoon, everybody. Can I remind everybody, of course, that uh, the meeting will be webcast and that uh, people do watch it and watch it repeatedly. So please ensure your microphone is on before you start speaking. And, of course, we do allow the use of uh, mobiles and other devices in here, but please make sure they're on silent. And if someone is speaking near you on a microphone, please don't use your mobile because sometimes it interferes. But it's my pleasure to invite councillors, their guests and members of public to this annual meeting of the council which of course is a special day. But before we start I'd like to ask everybody to stand and observe a minute's silence for the, the man who was killed in the street yesterday in Woolwich, his family and all those who have died in conflict during the last year.
Thank you, everybody. Are there any declarations of interest relating to matters appearing on this agenda? Thank you. I'm pleased to introduce my Mayor's report, which of course has been circulated, but there are um, some other things which I would like to say. Um, as you might imagine, after uh, my year in office, I'd like to start by thanking those people who I've worked with in the last year, uh, particularly Trudy, Jenny, Siobhan and Emma. Now, Trudy and Jenny and Siobhan did ask that they shouldn't be given any flowers or gifts today and that I should make a donation to the charities, which I will do. But that did not prevent my wife, nevertheless, <laughs> from getting them gifts. So if they could possibly come forward, um, I'd like to pass them over to them. I'd also like, of course, to thank Robbie um, and Bob and Chris and Aileen and Lee. Now, everybody who's been mayor knows all about Robbie. And they will know, of course, that the, uh, the main uh, purpose of uh, life as a mayor is simply to follow Robbie, and everything works out all right. I can see people nodding vigorously, Anne being one of them. When you're not with Robbie, people say, where's Robbie? Uh, even my own grandchildren look past me and say, where's Robbie? Isn't he here today? Uh, and Bob, too, is, Bob too is a, a really nice, calm man who, uh, whose company we've enjoyed. And I have to say, one of the, the sadnesses of ending as mayor is the fact that we won't be working with them so much in the future because they have become part of the family. Um, and they both do a terrific job. What's so interesting about both of them is their commitment to the mayorality. It's not to the individual as such, it's to the whole thing. And they, they have a great time and respect for the post, which is really good. And I know that those who did this job before me and, and Denise and those who do it after me will get exactly the same sort of treatment that I've got, which has been absolutely professional and kind and friendly, and I have to say a lot of fun as well. So I'd like Robbie and Bob to come forward as well, please. That's the present giving over. Uh, but I'd also like to thank Mark Wall and the Democratic Services team for all the help and support I've had from them. Again, a really, really professional organization. And last year, I did go to uh, the, 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 the final interviews for the awards for the best Democratic Services team of the year, which they just narrowly um, managed not to win. And I think we should all be proud of the work that they do. And I know as a backbench councillor, as the leader, as the mayor, as the former leader of the Green Group, I always got exactly the same treatment from Mark, as I'm sure that's true of everybody. They're thoroughly professional in everything they do, and again, um, they're, they're good fun too. I was told off in a corridor, actually, yesterday by the chief executive, <laughs> with laughing too much, um, <laughs> with some of, of Mark's colleague. <laughs> and they're also the people, um, it, Richard Toussaint and, and Martin, who've, who've been very helpful too. Um, and Martin, and Richard are old, old uh, colleagues of mine, and I've enjoyed working with them again this year. And then people like Danny and Bagus and Nikki and the town hall staff at, at both town halls, uh, who are also really helpful. And Tony Mould, of course, who's taken the photographs, and Jenny, who puts them up on the website. Now, I've had a tremendous year. I suppose the highlight, I've been lucky, because, of course, it was ju Jubilee year and the Olympic year. 
And there are just one or two highlights I'd like to mention. One of them certainly was meeting and uh, giving Steve over his, uh, his freedom of the city. He turned out to be all the things one would hope for in a hero, a really modest, nice man with time for everybody who wanted to talk to him on the day. Um, the party for looked after children at Christmas at the Amex, which we did instead of the party in the pavilion, which was a huge success. And City College did us proud with a really, really high, good high tea, and we had entertainers. About 140 looked after children, and foster parents were there. I've been to Finland. I went to France. I made a speech in French. Um, and it has been really interesting all the way through. But principally, what I remember from this year are the people. First of all, the charities that I've worked with. Um, the, they are terrific, all of them. The Martlets, of course, is a big charity. Uh, it employs a lot of staff, has a lot of volunteers. It is much bigger than the other two charities I was working with, uh, the Women's Centre and all sorts. And the Martlets was enormously generous in its time and expertise to the other two charities. One of the joys of the year has been the way in which they all work together. And, of course, we also had the Brighton, Brighton University on board as well, who, um, for instance, put some marathon runners up for us this year and raised some money for us. And they, in turn, they've been using the council chamber for some of the, the student union for some of their meetings. And the, and the people who've helped constantly through the years, among them... Um, Audrey Simpson and Carl from Oshima, who been, have been terrific, uh, and Joe, who did the variety show, which was, which was wonderful. They are typical of, this, of the spirit of this city. I mean, this city, the volunteering effort in this series is, is phenomenal. It has been said that Brighton & Hove has more volunteers per square inch than any other place in Britain, and after a year of meeting many of them, I'm prepared to believe it. But it is quite, quite remarkable um, what happens in this city. There is a genuine spirit of partnership. Uh, there is uh, a high regard for the, the post of mayor. I think anybody wearing the chains has to remember it's about the chains and the post and what you represent in, in, in civic pride and the, and the welfare of the city. But I would just like to, as, a, as an example of, of my year and what I've seen, pick out three examples of what people do in the city. The first one was a... a a, girl, a young woman who was working in the back of a St. John ambulance on the seafront on a very dark and cold February night. She was, she was a nurse, and she was tending to homeless men. And she worked already that day uh, a shift in the renal unit at the Sussex Hospital. And there she was, and she was there until the work was finished. And, of course, homeless people have trouble accessing health care sometimes. The St. John ambulance go out three or four nights a week in different places, retire, rely entirely on volunteers to do the work for them. I met an 11-year-old carer who looks after his mother from the time he gets home from school to the time he goes to school the next morning. His mother has a compendium of illnesses, some of which in result in fits, and that boy has to make the decision whether or not to call the ambulance for his mum. He's, he's doing well at school, uh, despite... despite uh, the fact that he, he has to work so hard all of the time. And he said to me, without any rancor, I asked him how he was, he said, I'm fine, but we're not having a holiday this year. So there'd be no, no break for him from it. And recently I met um, Ryan Hill from uh, Rocking Horse, and we, we met again yesterday to talk about this, and he's now going to look at the possibility of raising money to give some support to young carers and, and to get them some respite and to perhaps make their life a little easier than it is at the moment. And the, la the last example I would mention is, um, is are the people who run the Family Fund Day at Moorscombe, who the local councils will know about already, who have done it for 30 years. They're both about 70 now. They're finding it very difficult to recruit anybody else to take it over. And year in and year out, they organize what is actually quite a complex and big, big event. And that raises another issue, I think, which is a problem for the city, and that is getting more younger people involved in organizations of all sorts. And we do need to look very carefully at that. But if I finish my year, heartened by what I've seen, there are, of course, problems at the moment, but the city is generally in good heart. Uh, it is a remarkable place, full of extraordinary people. I'm not a Brightonian, but I live here out of choice. My whole family lives here now. I think it's a wonderful place to live. I know that we all share the same aspiration to make it better. I look forward to working with you all as a councillor in the future, and I'm very grateful for the privilege that I was given this year. Thank you very much indeed.
the next item of business is to elect a mayor for the ensuing year, and I call on Councillor Mears to nominate Councillor Denise Cobb. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, firstly, can I congratulate you and Heather on your outstanding work as Mayor and Mayoress for the City, which supports and highlights the civic role of the mayoralty. And I am pleased to stand and propose Councillor Denise Cobb as the new mayor for our great city and to be part of the seamless robe of loyalty of the mayor being passed on. I have known Denise for many years as a colleague and a friend and I was delighted when she asked if I would propose her today. I know she will make an excellent mayor. Denise has worked tirelessly for, as a councillor for many years, not only in her role as a ward councillor, but also in many other important roles she has held within the council, including when in administration, she was a deputy to the council and also a lead member on sustainability, licensing amongst others. With Denise, you know whatever job she is asked to do, she will give 100% commitment. Denise is a true citizen of the city and knows it well. Not only running a small business, but also for many years has taught local people to swim, and I'm sure in the process, saving many lives. Denise also teaches swim aerobic classes in the city, and I hear she is a tough taskmaster, but you know you will be slimmer if Denise is your teacher. I would not be surprised if one of her mayoral fundraising events will include swimming, a challenge for us all. Denise's family is very important to her, with many here today to celebrate. And those who know her well will be aware of her commitment and loyalty to all her family, including her grandchildren. Denise will not only bring strength and loyalty to the role of mayor, but also patience, something she demonstrated at a group meeting when she peeled an egg without rupturing the membrane, no mean feat, and with patience I'm sure many of us would like to have. Qualities Denise will bring to her role as mayor, chairing council meetings, tough but fair. Mr Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Councillor Denise Cobb today. I'm sure Denise will be long remembered, not only for her down-to-earth approach, but she will uphold the finest traditions of the mayoral role in one of Britain's most vibrant cities. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Mayor. <laughs> Councillor Cox. Councillor Cox, I have you down here to second the motion. I wasn't actually briefed on that, but I formally second uh, Denise, who certainly indeed. taught me an awful lot as, uh, as her assistant in Westbourne. <laughs> ah, thank you very much indeed, Graham. Um, are there any other nominations? Um, there are no other nominations. Uh, I therefore congratulate Councillor Cobb on being elected the Mayor of Brighton and Hove for the coming year. Councillor Kitkat, I would think you wish to say something. Well, on, just on behalf, we voted now, but on behalf of the Green Group, I just wanted to support uh, Councillor Cobb's nomination, and I wish her all the best. I'm sure she's going to do the city proud. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Theobald. Oh, sorry, Councillor Morgan. <laughs> I've got it in the wrong order. Councillor Morgan. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm pleased as leader of the Labour and Cooperative Group to speak in support of Councillor Cobb as our city's mayor for 2013-14. Many people quite understandably make the wise choice to move to the city because it's such a wonderful place to live and work. Councillor Cobb is one of the lucky ones, like me, to have called the city their home from birth. Unlike me, Councillor Cobb is, as a teacher of swimming, badminton and gymnastics, familiar with the inside of a sports centre. <laughs> so we'll no doubt have the fitness and stamina to cope with the intensive but rewarding schedule of mayoral engagements. Councillor Cobble brings to the role a huge amount of experience from her four terms of office and as well as Deputy Leader of the Council, as well as the recent scrutiny panel on trans equality where we were able to work together. 
as she has done in so many capacities in the Council and in her life outside this chamber, such as her work with young adults uh, with multiple learning difficulties and severe physical disabilities. Her work on that panel report will help deliver better lives for local people. The Mayoralty is a civic symbol of our collective history, our alliance of towns, villages and neighbourhoods between the Downs and Sea. It's an honour to represent this place so rich in its heritage and traditions, so new and so vibrant in its culture and innovation. And it is the Mayor who, above party politics, can best represent that civic pride and public service. Like Denise, I'm new in my job, so I sincerely wish her well in her time in office. I hope she enjoys every minute, even chairing these meetings, and I hope she will make a fine first citizen of Brighton and Hove and a fine representative of everyone fortunate enough to call it home. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well, can I also add my congratulations to Denise? I hope you have a very good year. I'm sure you'll be an excellent mayor and I look forward to working as your deputy. I now have to uh, end the meeting for a short period to leave and we change roads. But there's one thing I have to do before I go. I have some flowers for my wife and also for the deputy mayor. I'd like to do those before we go.
I, Denise Cobb, having been elected to the office of Mayor of Brighton and Hove, declare that I offer, sorry, that I office upon myself and will duty and fully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of the members of Brighton and Hove City Council. Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests, friends and family, thank you for all being here today on this memorable occasion. Firstly, I'd like to thank Councillor Bill Randall for the way he fulfilled his role as Mayor over the past year, supported by Heather as consort and assisted by Councillor Meadows as deputy. This team represented the city at home and abroad offering a warm, respectful welcome to visitors. I thank them for all their hard work. I was first elected in 1999, and I clearly remember the first annual council I attended. The member being made mayor was Councillor Jenny Langston. I remember it well, and I was very moved by the occasion. At the time, I felt somewhat isolated, and I had a number of personal issues which were very difficult. So when Jenny thanked her family and friends, excuse me, for their support, I remember thinking, I'd love to be the mayor one. I'd love to be the mayor one day, but who will I have to thank? Sorry. Fourteen years later, here I am. Unbelievable. I have lots of people to thank. Councillors from all parties, my family, my friends, and especially my colleagues without whose support I would not be here today. I feel extremely honoured and it really means a lot to me. I was born in Brighton and although I've lived and worked in other parts of the country and abroad, Brighton is home. My children and grandchildren are here and I'm delighted that my granddaughter, Luna Rose, has agreed to be my consort. <clears throat> Many of you will be aware that my working life involves a lot of physical activity. I intend to apply some of those elements during my mayoralty, but I don't want councillors expecting a therapeutic treatment. I'm more likely to treat you to, to one of my aqua aerobic classes, so be warned or you might find yourself in deep water. People are drawn to Brighton and Hove. It's a place they feel they belong to. It is different from other places. Its history, population, geography, culture and values combine to make it quite unlike anywhere else. The charities that I will be supporting this year reflect, in part, that diversity and unique set of qualities. I hope that Brighton & Hove Age UK, the Argus Appeal, Off the Fence, the Martlets and Rocking Horse will all benefit from your support as well as mine. The popular image of our city is one that is contemporary, cosmopolitan, mindful of its heritage, but embracing of the future, respectful of tradition and open to new ideas. In recognition of this, my year as mayor will be one of multi-faith, and I have invited faith representatives from my ward to act as my chaplains. I invite everyone here to the initial civic service at the Unitarian Church on New Road this Sunday, the 26th of May at 11 a.m. I hope we will be able to fully represent the diversity and difference of belief throughout the city. I'm looking forward to meeting new people. 
excited by the prospect of seeing the city in a new way and slightly anxious about chairing meetings of the full council. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today, especially those who have already done so much to support me. The distinguished guests, my family, and my grandson, Tyrus. who I promised I'd make a special mention. For being witness to a small piece of history for the city, but a huge moment for me. Thank you. I would now like to invite Councillor Jason Kitkat to move a vote of thanks to Councillor Bill Randall, the retiring mayor. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Let me be the first to congratulate you on your appointment, and I was very touched by your speech. Thank you very much, and look forward to working with you in the, in the year ahead. Um, but my, my duty right now is to um, move the motion of thanks to Councillor Randall for his incredible year as Mayor, and his report um, summarises 800 engagements at least, if, and quite a few more informal ones. The first tweeting Mayor, I believe, also circulating the city in an electric car, um, he has made an incredible mark. The Christmas party for looked after children and their families, um, which I believe included the mayor dressing up as a certain famous somebody to give out presents. Without a beard. All oh, right. Um, working with his three charities, the citizenship ceremonies, which I was very touched by um, Councillor Randall's um, column on that as well, and, and the range of diversity of people who choose to become part of um, our society here and join British citizenship in one of our town halls which the mayor officiates over and um, his ambassadorial role flying the flag for the city um, in France and in, and in Finland um, amongst many many other exploits and I believe including driving the Volks railway just yesterday mm -hmm. um, um, and I know my colleague Councillor Bowden will say more but for me on a personal note uh, Madam oh. Mayor was seeing how Bill and Heather engaged with people, engaging with my children, for example, on a number of times as they saw them in chains, as they like to say, emphasized, for me, Bill's great, incredible human touch that he's brought to this in the last year, engaging with people across the city in um, a civic city and community pride. Thank you, Bill, for all you've done. It's been an incredible year. Thank you very much on behalf of us all. And I would like to invite Councillor Bowden to second. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and my congratulations go to you too. Um, I too was moved by your speech. Um, I would like to say a few words uh, to my friend, my best man, who I lent to you <laughs> as mayor. Um, it is, you know, uh, uh, something to note, a first green mayor in the country, uh, but there's also another first the first teen scene correspondent of Jackie magazine to don the mayoral robes. I think this is worth noting uh, in the minutes. Hey, chicks, as I hear him say, and I, I have seen him melt a few audiences' hearts by just mentioning the word Jackie magazine, and he, they were putty uh, and uh, absolutely eating out of his hand. Um, it's been a pleasure following his exploits. Uh, he's... Uh, very competitive, I noticed, so uh, maybe Denise can get him into the pool uh, uh, even now. Um, I've seen him playing table tennis, all chained up, and I've seen him playing bowls and every other sporting activity. He will have a, 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 try his hand at it. It has been a, a fantastic uh, event. Am I, am I setting off? I'm setting off the alarms here. <laughs> Um, uh, to have him as our, our first Green Mayor, and he's done the city proud as well. It has been a, a, a pleasure working on his committee, and I know that Brian, uh, who's sitting over there, and other members of other uh, groups who have sat with us, Andrew over there, we've had great fun uh, raising money for his uh, uh, charities. Uh, we're very pleased to have him back in the group now, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he's left the mayoralty in, in good shape. Thank you very much indeed, Bill. Thank you. Councillor Theobald. Yes. Um, thank you very much, um, Madam Mayor. And may I join those who've already congratulated you 
and congratulating you on getting the highest honour that this council can give anyone, Thank which you. is to become the mayor. And I hope that you have a very happy year, and I'm sure you will. Now, Madam Mayor, I've had the honour and privilege to propose many mayors and support many mayors over the years. And it's interesting to remember what one said the year before to a mayor who's actually coming in. And I do remember saying at that time, apart from the fact that Bill is a, an Arsenal supporter and I'm a Tottenham supporter, plus Brighton as well, um, but apart from that, that I was confident that Bill was going to be a very amiable, a very fair and a really an excellent mayor. And I'm sh sure that that is one of the few occasions where I've been proved absolutely right and that you will all agree with me. Uh, I think there are three things uh, in, in the main that a mayor uh, is responsible for or does. And I think the three things really in the main are to be the first citizen of the city, to welcome delegates to the city, to welcome conferences, residents, uh, at the various voluntary um, bodies and organizations and such like. And uh, I've had the privilege over the year to have spent quite a little bit of time with Bill and Heather at various community events. And the welcome that Bill always gave, and Heather too, to uh, organizations where he was there as the mayor. And may I say the friendliness and welcome that he gave us councillors as well whenever we went. And it was quite a joy. And I say that to Heather, thank you very much. And to Bill, um, we always had a, a, a friendly greeting wherever we, we saw you. I, I suppose the second uh, thing is to raise money for charities. Uh, and again, Bill has done, uh, and Heather, and their team have done uh, a splendid job, as all mayors always do. And then I suppose very briefly, the third, and many people may say the most important function, which of course is to chair the council itself. And I do want to say this to, to Bill, that certainly over the last 12 months, there have been occasions where my group and I have not been particularly happy the way uh, certain things were fanning out. And I asked um, on at least two occasions, separate occasions, whether the mayor would at least allow us to move uh, an amendment or to move something before the meeting started, even though it was not on the agenda. And I have to tell you that on both occasions, and if it was more than two, on every occasion, the mayor has allowed us to do that. And it was absolutely right that he should do. We obviously lost them, but that didn't matter. I mean, the very fact was, the very fact was that the mayor was prepared to, uh, the mayor was prepared to, I won't say overrule officers, but he was prepared to say yes, they are fully entitled in a democratic body to put those amendments, and that we did. And I, I thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, um, for that. We are very pleased. So, on behalf of this group, thank you very much for a really excellent year and I know that you'll be a great support to the mayor over the next year. But thank you and have, I won't say a good retirement, but that's the wrong thing to say because you'll be around for a long time. But uh, thank you again. Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and congratulations, warm congratulations from myself and my colleagues uh, on, in you. this party. On behalf of the Labour and Cooperative Group, I'd like to extend the warmest of thanks and the greatest of respect to Bill for his service as Mayor over the past year. He has been a friendly, accessible and human face of the mayoralty and has won many fans from across the city. He has chaired our often difficult meetings with a calm firmness and a good humour, which would have won him respect from across the chamber had that respect not already have been in place. He has only cemented that respect with his conduct over the past year. As has been said, his mayoralty has undoubtedly been a mayoralty of firsts. The first green mayor, the first mayor to use an electric car, and the first to have to get out and push it when the battery ran. <laughs> Even though, as an Arsenal fan, he will have become used to not winning anything, <laughs> I suspect Bill's only regret is that he did not see, at the end of his mayoral year, the Albion reach Wembley in next Monday's playoff final. I'm sure a victory parade through the streets of the city would have been a welcome epilogue to his time in office. We will be pleased to see him back in committee life to share his expertise in housing. 
I'm sure he will welcome a little more time to enjoy music, the cinema, and possibly a quick half at the Napier in between engagements as, as Deputy Mayor. <laughs> but again, from all of us here in the Labour Group, thank you, Bill, for your outstanding service to our great city in a mayoral year to be proud of. A formal vote of thanks has been moved. Does the Council agree? Would Council Randall and Mrs. Heather Randall please come forward to receive their commemorative badges for their year in office? The next item on the agenda is the election of the Deputy Mayor. I move that the Council does elect Councillor Bill Randall as Deputy Mayor for Brighton and Hove for the ensuing municipal year. Oh, sorry, yes, does the Council agree? I was, I was looking. And I've got, to, I've got um, Councillor Kit Cat will second that, emo that motion. I nearly said email. Well, I think I'll formally second it. I think as we've uh, vociferously agreed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? There being no other nominations, I move Councillor Randall be appointed as Deputy Mayor for Brighton and Tove. Does the Council agree? agree? I hereby declare Councillor Bill Randall Deputy Mayor of Brighton and Tove for the forthcoming municipal year. I, Bill Randall, having been elected to the office of Deputy Mayor of Brighton and Hove, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfill the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I undertake to observe the code as to the conduct which is expected of members of Brighton and Hove City Council. I have the following communications. As I mentioned earlier, my five mayor's charities for this year are Brighton and Tove Age UK, The Argus Appeal, Off the Fence, The Martlets and Rocking Horse. Will all benefit from your support. I hope they will all benefit from your support as well as mine. Secondly, as I previously said, my year as mayor will be a multi-faith one and I have invited faith representatives from my ward to act as my chaplains. 
and I am looking forward to having different forms of prayer prior to each council meeting. I'd just like to remind you that a civic service will be held at the Unitarian Church on New Road this Sunday, the 26th of May, at 11 a.m., and everyone is welcome to attend. Finally, my first charity event will be tea at three in the Mayor's Parlour tomorrow. Please join me if you can. I'll be collecting raffle and tombola prizes to support my chosen charities. The next item on the agenda is the appointment of the Leader of the Council, and I call upon Councillor Davey to move the nomination of J Councillor Jason Kitkat. Sorry, Councillor Dean. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And first of all, may I add my own congratulations to all those expressed so far um, and wish you a very happy year as Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor, it's been a year since I last stood here to nominate Councillor Jason Kitkat as leader of Brighton and Hove City Council. And I, at that time, a year ago, listed many of the talents and attributes which I felt would make Jason an excellent leader. And so I won't list them all through again, um, other than to say that Jason is a man of consistency and many of those talents and attributes remain pretty much the same. Uh, we have had um, come a long way in the past year um, to give just three examples of what um, has been achieved under Jason Kettat's leadership. Uh, we've put through the city deal. Um, Brighton and Hove has become the world's first one-planet city and the Rugby World Cup will be coming to Brighton in 2015. So, Madam Mayor, it gives me great pleasure to nominate Jason Kitkat again as leader of Brighton and Hove City Council for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. I now call upon Councillor Davey to second the nomination. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. So it's, it's my great pleasure to, to second uh, Councillor Jason Kitkat as uh, leader of the council. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? There being no other nominations, I move that Councillor Jason Kitkat be appointed as the leader of the council. Does the council agree? I hereby declare Councillor Jason Kitkat has been appointed as the leader of Brighton and Hove City Council for the municipal year. The next item is to approve the appointment of the Deputy Leaders of the Council. I therefore move that the appointment of Councillors Ian Davey and Lizzie Dean as Deputy Leaders of the Council, as set out in the agenda, be approved. Does the Council agree? Agreed. The next item is to approve the appointment of the Leader of the Official Opposition. I note that Councillor Geoffrey Theobald is the Leader of the Conservative Group which has the largest number of members of the two minority groups and therefore propose that Councillor Geoffrey Theobald be du duly applied as the leader of the official opposition. Does the Council agree? Agreed. The next item is to note the appointment of councillors to the following positions. The convener of the Green Group, Councillor Jason Kitkat. The leader of the Conservative Group, Councillor Geoffrey Theobald. Leader of the Labour and Cooperative Group, Councillor Warren Morgan. I move that the appointment of the councillors to the positions as set out in the agenda be noted. Does the council agree? The next item is to agree the appointment of lead members for specific areas of responsibility as proposed by the leader of the council and set out in the addendum papers before you. Lead member for communities and equalities, Councillor Randall. Lead member for community safety, Councillor Wakefield. And lead member for transport, Councillor Davey. I move that the appointments of the councillors to the positions as set out in the addendum be agreed. Does the council agree? The next item on the agenda is, to, is the report of the chief executive on the allocation of seats between political groups, the appointment of chairs, deputy chairs, and opposition spokespersons to the various committees, subcommittees, and forums, and the appointment of representatives on outside bodies for 
to 14. The report, together with the various appendices, has been circulated. I move that item 9, together with, with its appendices 1, 2 and 3. Sorry, Councillor Theobald. Yes, um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, I th these things are always rather difficult when there are a lot of people here on a happy occasion, and I will be as delicate as I can. But once again, I have to draw attention uh, to the fact that as the opposition group, one would have expected um, the chairmanship of the Overview and Scrutiny Commission and the Audit and Standards Committee should have gone to the Conservative Party. We're in a situation where one left-wing party is scrutinising the other. And quite frankly, when we were, uh, when we, when we were in, the major in the majority, um, we, the Labour Party were the official opposition, and they held those two points. I'm just making this point once again, once again, that there is this agreement between the two left-wing parties over these issues, which we um, really find quite unreasonable. And may I add another point as well, and that is the question of proportionality on committees. We listened to the Labour Party uh, complaining, but once again, we were of the view that committees should have been by proportion, and therefore committees like the Policy and Resources Committee and the Environment and Transport Committee, as it will now be called, should have been proportionate. And consequently, when the Labour Party complain, uh, when the Greens make decisions they don't like, they've had the opportunity to make a change. I just make those points and I will now sit down. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Theobald. I move that item 9, together with its appendices 1, 2 and 3, be approved. Does the Council agree? agree? That concludes the business before us today. I would like to thank you all for attending and invite the assembled company to join me in the banqueting hall at the Royal Pavilion for refreshments and I declare the meeting closed. Well done.